So in this video, we're going to be setting up our own custom form field, which is going to be a slug component. We're going to be able to specify the minimum and the maximum length in this component. On top of that, we will also have the ability to now use the tip tap editor in there. We're going to customize our article page and article cards as well, so that it will work neatly with the tip tap editor. So let's get into the video and crack on with building our content management system. Grab your co favorite coding beverage and let's get started. So let's go ahead and make a slug component in here. So PHP Artisan make form field and let's call this slug. So inside slug.blade.php we have a view here and inside slug.php we have this form field here, which is perfect, that's what we want. So in here, we as a starter just want to go into slug.blade.php and in there we want to add a few different things in. So for the classes, I'm going to go ahead and add them in here instead of copying and pasting them in because it's going to take quite a while to do that. So here we go. These are all the classes we're going to be using. And we're also going to be, in this case, heading over to the end here. We're going to have this X data on the end instead. And then we're going to have an input field. Again, I'm going to just go ahead and get all the classes copied in because it will take quite a while to uh, copy and paste all those in. I've gotten them this from the browser, just copied it from a regular input field. All right, so with that sorted, let's go ahead and set this type as text. We want this to have an X model of state and X on input. In this case, it's going to be state is going to input to event dot target dot value to lowercase and then we're going to replace it with um, a regular expression here which is just going to be a dash coming through and then we're going to again replace here where we have another regular expression Just like that. And that should be everything for this part here. So what we want to go in now and do inside our PHP file, let's go in here and first and foremost, make sure that we have a public function, get value, which is going to be a string. In here, we just want to set value to parent get value and we want to return str slug and we want to have value in here just like that so if we head into our article resource now in here we should be able to replace this with just slug. So let's head into the browser and see how this works. All right, so now that we have this done, let's take a look in the browser and see if it works. And it does work perfectly fine here. If I go in and say testing, I can't add certain fields here. So if I try to add an exclamation mark or a plus icon, it will just not work. So this works perfectly. So now we have this component here that we can use and later on add into our package so that we have our nice custom slug field here. And the only other thing we want to go ahead and see if we can fix is the label here because at the moment if we look at it, it doesn't actually in here click on it here if we click on the label. So let's try to see if we can fix that now. All right, so for the ID here, let's go in and add get ID, which will then help us 
get the correct ID here. So as you can see, this now works perfectly fine. So again, we just need to have this outline here coming now when you click on it so that it works better. So let's take a look at that. So to get this nice orange color here, I think we just need to update the classes. So let's go ahead and copy them there. So in here, I'm just going to go ahead and add the extra classes here. And there we go. So now if we click on the slug or the title, it works perfectly fine. So another thing to check uh, in here is that we want to make this required. So what happens if we do that now? Let's remove this here. It still works perfectly fine. And what if we go ahead and say we want this to be a minimum of So we don't actually have that option here, whereas for example if we go in here you can see we have minimum length and so on. So let's go ahead and add minimum length and maximum length. Alright, let's go ahead in here now and set a minimum and a maximum length. So let's say protected in minimum length. I'm going to set that to no. And let's do the same thing for the maximum length here. And let's go in now and have a protected function. And in this case, let's just call this setup. This needs to be void parent setup called here. And then this after state hydrated. We want to have a closure in here with slug as component and state. Just like this, perfect. And then in here we just want to set component ID component get ID attribute. So let's go ahead and create that here. And then let's go ahead and create this function now. So public function get ID attribute string in here we just want to return slug dash str slug this get label just like that and outside of that we just want to now have um i'm going to actually move this below this here so we want to have in here then a public function minimum length and this is going to be in static side but we want to in this case have an in length in here and let's have the same for the maximum length in here i want to go ahead and say this minimum length is going to be equal to length we want to have this rule in this case this is how we can actually set roles and filament for our custom components and validate it just um, like you see with the text input. And return this. So now let's have the same for the maximum one instead. Just like that. And outside of that, we just need to functions here to get the values just like this. Let's head back in here and see what happens. You can see this is now a minimum length of five characters. But it saves if I go with this. And if we have this empty, it says this is required. Still works with this slug generation there, which is excellent. So basically this now allows us to have a component where we can determine and control the length of it. So we could even go ahead and say max length of five. And there we go. So now we have this 
really good way to actually validate this. Um, and this is basically everything we need for this article resource. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we can implement the tip tap editor now. So I've gone ahead before we installed the tip tap editor to require cheeky PHP 1.30 because uh, Wired Commons uses um, allows either 1.30 or the 2.0 one, but because Wired Commons was installed first, it will take the 2.00 one. So instead, I've gone ahead and specify we need to use this one because if you go ahead and try to install tip tap editor here. We will get an issue with this uh, spatty cheeky PHP. So there we go. Now we've installed it. Again, I've gone ahead already and followed this um, part here before with the custom theme section, which we did in the previous video about the creator plugin. So let's go ahead and require all the relevant things in here. So this needs to be added into the theme CSS file. So we just want to go ahead to admin CSS or theme CSS, sorry. And then here we just want to head into our vendor file. Just like we did here. Let's have these two by each other like this. Um, and then we just want to go ahead and have this added into our tailwind convict.js. Just like this. And let's make sure that inside our Tailwind config.js as well, that inside our post CSS config.json file specifically, in here, we want to allow basically to have this nesting. Yes, I'm going to go ahead and just copy this and replace it. Perfect. Let's reboot our custom theme. npm run dev. And let's go ahead and actually install the editor now. So I'm going to go into article resource here. And in here, I'm going to go ahead and say we're going to grab the tip tap editor. We're going to make content and we will, in this case, have this set as required. We're going to have in here, um, let's just leave it like that for now and then go back into our theme panel here. You can see we have everything in here and it should work just like before. So the only difference now is inside our article page. And here we now need to actually get the content correctly. So if we go in here now, what we should be able to do is say tip tap converter as HTML article content. And we want to have in this case as well, a table of contents, which will be set to true and max step of four. So this allows you to then have tables of content set up as well. On top of that, we also want in to our article card. We want to uncomment this one here, just like that. And let's take a look at the main page now. So this seems to work fine. The content here seems to work fine as well. So that's perfect. So now we're using tip tap editor instead. So that's all for this video. Thank you very much for watching it. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like and the subscribe button and I'll see you in the next tutorial.